Hi, and welcome back to Glassbox writing automated RSpec tests. Today we're going to have a slightly more detailed look at writing before and after hooks for RSpec tests. We're going to look at two different types of hook and would we'll try and look at theoretical scenarios where you'd use a particular type of hook. In our test so far, we've always used a before and after hook to effectively open up our browser as part of the before and close our browser as part of the after. And we also had an it block which did a test. So in this video, we're just going to kind of really briefly go over all of those concepts in a little bit more concrete manner. Uh, so this video won't be really web driver heavy duty, it'll be more on the theoretical side. So the first thing I'm going to do is just write a really basic it uh, or a test. And all it's going to do is just going to print out uh, test method started and test, uh, test method finished. Uh, we don't really care about the logic of the test, not for this video. If we just run this really quickly, so we just got a printout saying test method started and test method finished. And we've looked at these before and after as well. So we've had a look at before all uh, do. Again, let me just copy paste this in there. Uh, and we've had a look at the after as well. When we run this, what do you expect to get as an output? Uh, well, I would expect to get all of this before printed out first, followed by the test, followed by the after. And the reason why is because the all before methods run before any test runs. And all after methods run after all the tests have run. So if I was to run this now, I would expect to get this printout first, followed by the test, followed by the after. So again, let's quickly just see what happens. Uh, and there you go, we got the before all method printed first, followed by the test, followed by the after. And the reason is because this before method, which is set to all, means run this before method before all the tests run or another way of phrasing it is run this only once for this describe block and the same is said for this after in that run this after only once for this describe block so if we had say let's just name this test method one If we were to, let's just say, copy paste this uh, and call this test method 2 for instance, what would you expect the output to be? Well, like I said, these before and after where we've clearly said or marked them to be an all before and all after means this will only run once for the given describe block. This will also only run once for the given describe block. This, however, will run twice. So if we just run the, the test really quickly, we can see that the before run once, and then the first test method, followed by the second test method, and then the after run. Now, RSpec provides us with another before and after method as well, where we change the type to be of type each. So if I just copy that and put that in there, and this time I'm just going to say each instead. Now, what would you expect to run 
or rather what would you expect the output to be if I were to run this now. So this is a little bit complicated or it's not complicated, it's probably more along the lines of confusing. Uh, but let me explain. So like I said, when we mark something as all, this will only run once for all the given tests. And I've already said that when we have a before and after marked as each, this before and after will run each time for all given tests. So in other words, this before will run before this test runs and this before will run again before this test runs and the same is said for the after. So when you run, or rather when I run this, I expect this first before to be called first because the all before is always, it takes precedence over the each before. So I would expect this before to run first, followed by the before each, followed by a test, followed by an after each, and then followed by before each again, and then this test, then followed by the after each, and then the after all. So let's run and see what happens. Okay, so what happened was, like I said, first the before all method run, because that only runs once, and then the before each, then a test, and then the after each. And then similarly for the second test we had the before each, test, after each, and then after all. So why am I showing you this? Why am I effectively almost repeating little bits and bobs I've said throughout a lot of this aspect video. Well, because in this video I wanted to concentrate more on what information you would actually put inside this. What kind of logic would you put inside these methods? The kind of logic you would put inside each and every single one of these methods uh, can vary depending on the type of test you're writing or your testing framework. So for a given test, it's, it's pretty obvious. Uh, the logic is the test. Uh, there's really nothing to it. Whatever logic goes inside your test should only belong in your test. I've I've been really clear about this in that I firmly believe that whatever code goes inside a test method should only be related to that test method. There should be no kind of setting up this or setting up that. Uh, that's just something I'm really firm on. So we know what logic happens in a test, so we can close these just to kind of uh, help us uh, visually see things a little bit more better. For an each type of hook, well we know they run once every time before a test. So if you like, it would be really inefficient to have say a browser start up fresh here or if you were to make a new instance of a new browser, it would be really inefficient if you have a hundred different tests. Uh, but at the same time, for each given test, you probably want to start a brand new browser because that is evidence that the test that you are just about to run is running on a fresh browser. So maybe creating a new browser or uh, instantiating, uh, let's just say uh, creating a new browser and opening it is probably not very efficient but at the same time this means that we are definitely starting each test on a brand new fresh browser with no history no cache no cookies nothing so before each is probably a really good place to have something like a browser start up fresh it's a prerequisite to a test but not the test now whenever we write any kind of uh, if you like opening actions or actions where we execute something to bring it up to fruition you want to reflect that in its after method as well so for the before each if we open a browser in the after each we should close the browser uh, if if you like in the before each we instantiate the driver then in the after each you would close the driver so in short, the each hooks, or the before each and after each, these hooks should be more catered to provide the initial steps for a test, but without touching the core concept or the core logic that is to be tested 
as part of a test. So a good example is opening up a browser or maybe let's just say this describe block was all related to uh, testing various things on a contact page form. So if we have a look, so if we go to the contact page for instance, it was all relevant to testing these fields and this entire test revolved around testing stuff on this page. So in your before each block it would make sense to navigate to this uh, to this web app and then click on contact and then hand over the rest of the control to the test so the before reach would actually navigate do some navigation for you as well because that step would be not part of the test but a requirement to the test so it makes you a good candidate to actually have an actual web driver or selenium test step inside a before method naturally in the after method you just clean up anything you open so that takes care of this before each and after each so that now leaves us with this before all and after all what kind of functions or mechanisms can you use this before all and after all uh, well the first thing is before all and after all isn't used very sparingly because most of the stuff we really need to do is catered for by the before each and after each but there are some cases where you would need to use a really high level before and a really high level after i.e. a before all and after all in cases where you do need certain things to be set up which are even more outside the scope of setting up a browser for instance let's just say you need to establish a connection to a database so that your database is up and running which your browser can then connect to you don't want to do that in the before reach because that would be supremely inefficient simply because you'd be opening a connection and you'd be closing a connection every time you run a test if you only have a couple of tests maybe it doesn't matter but if you have a hundred different tests and you have to make that connection a hundred different times you've got to also understand the kind of constraints you'll be putting on the database uh, you're not doing performance testing here you're doing automation testing you don't want to cause performance issues you want to test for functional issues if you want to be able to say create a connection to a database for instance and you only want to do it the one time this before all and after all are good candidates for you to do that in you could effectively create a connection to a database and I'm just using a database as a proxy to some example where you would only want one instance of it it could be anything it could be starting off some kind of Tomcat service or starting off some kind of service in general where you only want a single instance of it to be running the before all and after all are really good candidates for you to do that in it allows you to really quickly make a connection make it only the once maintain that connection throughout the entire test and after all of your tests are done close it so before all and after all are really good candidates for you to help maintain those really heavy duty uh, work that you don't want to restart again and again so now we've effectively covered uh, really good conceptual or theoretical ideas of how to use before and after all and how to use before and after each uh, there's a couple of other gotchas as well in that when you're running a test if your before method fails for whatever reason then none of your tests will fail because your tests assume that something magic is happening in the before methods and if the before methods don't pass then surely the test shouldn't run at all because it does make logical sense if you've written a before all method you've probably written it with the intention of providing some kind of preemptive steps to your test but obviously if your before methods fail then your test just won't run uh, your tests actually rely on your before methods passing without any issues or another way to put it is to be able to not throw any errors uh, the same however isn't said for the after methods since your after methods actually happen after your test if they fail then your test doesn't really care about it because it's happened after the bulk of the test has run so it just continues uh, obviously that can create problems uh, so for instance if we if our after all method failed any uh, maintained or sustained a connection to a database that still would be there and that could create uh, issues in terms of the time it takes to run any other further tests uh, naturally if you were to look at these before each and after each let's just say the browser didn't close for whatever reason you could end up with 
who knows how many open browsers which could effectively turn out to be some kind of performance hit on your environment in which you're running your tests. There's actually a lot of things and there's a lot of rules which aren't exactly explicit which you kind of need to know about. Uh, so in this video we've talked about some really good candidates where you'd want to use certain scenarios which uh, only in the all hooks but not in the each hooks and some scenarios where you'd definitely want to use in the each hooks but not in the all hooks. We've also talked about the order in which these before and afters and tests run as well. We really haven't done any web driver stuff, uh, but we've definitely discussed some really good potential ways of managing web driver on a more sustainable level so that we're able to more efficiently run our tests uh, in a more elegant and manageable fashion. And that's it for this video folks. If you enjoy my video and find they bring you some new knowledge or insight into writing web driver aspect tests, then please subscribe and rate. If you have any questions or video suggestions, then please leave a comment below. Many thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao. Thank you.